Open their autumn campaign. The new international season is underway. Soon it's the Six Nations and the World Cup. Injuries are already stacking up and concussion is never far from the news. Here is one of the victims. Lee Halfpenny leaves the field. The WRU launched its concussion policy last month, but is it enough? Tonight, we ask, is it time for all players to wake up to the dangers? After that knock, just seemed to have a bit of a glass head and I just couldn't take any kind of knock. We record the number of blows with special headbands. It really puts in perspective how hard, like the forces your head's going through during a game. And we hear about the possible long-term effects of concussion. It accelerates brain aging. Uh, and increases susceptibility potentially to early onset dementia. Rugby is a game played by thousands and enjoyed by millions, from the international game to the grassroots. Like here with Van Trissant, where they're preparing for their next match. 27-year-old Bedwyr Harry's played for the team last year, but for him, rugby has become a spectator sport. The head injuries towards the end of last season, because I had another knock at the end of last season, was starting to cause me concern. Bedward says that three years ago he suffered a concussion playing in Llanelli. He woke up in hospital with his girlfriend at his bedside. I asked Emma um, what she was doing there and she, and she explained that we've moved in together that day, um, but I had no recollection of that. Um, my brother was there and he'd, he's got, he, at the time he had a six-month-old baby. I had no recollection that his son had been born. He says he decided to carry on playing rugby, but found it increasingly difficult. Well, there's one incident um, at the club I played for last year. I got in the car and I just didn't know how to drive home, and that's the route I do every day. And it wasn't a, a big knock, it was just the slightest knock. Just after that, after that knock in 2011, I just seemed to have a bit of a glass head and I just couldn't take any kind of knocks. Another player getting used to life without rugby is Martin Williams. So there's one of the two new cats, Martin Williams of Pontypridd, who will be 21 in eight days' time. He played his first match for Wales in 1996, retiring in 2012. Martin Williams! He says the way the game is played has changed greatly. Over the last, say, 17, 18 years, it's, it's not far off a different sport, you know, I think the you, know, you have to look at the size of the players these days. As it goes so naturally, the game's become more intense and there's obviously far more um, brutal collisions. Players these days are taller, spend more time in the gym and know more about nutrition and supplements. And it shows too. Back in the 70s, Gerald Davis played wing for the Welsh team. He was five foot nine and less than 11 and a half stone. Now we have George North at six foot four, weighing in at over 17 stone. That's over five and a half stone heavier and seven inches taller. It's not just the players who've changed, it's also the style of tackling. Before the game turned professional, players were taught to tackle for the legs. Now, that can be seen as a last resort. I think as the game's involved and you've had defence coaches you know, at the forefront of, uh, of, the, of the management team, it, you know, it's no longer the, uh, good enough just to make a tackle. You've got to stop the player on the game line or hit the player back over the game line. So it's, it, it, that, that part of the game has changed more than anything. Those changes at the top of the game seem to be mirrored everywhere at the grassroots and youth level too. Andrew Griffiths is one of the coaches for the junior team at Llantrissant Rugby Club. That's better, Craig, that's good. keep supporting. He says you can see bigger players and bigger tackles at all levels of the game. The game has become far more physical, even at, you know, 
ages of 14 upwards. Years ago in youth rugby, it was a case that, you know, it was basically like young boys playing really, whereas now, you know, they, they physically, at the, at the age of 17, 18, they are physically built as men because obviously they're on the weights more. Andrew's two sons, Ethan and Cregan, both play for Llantrissant. 18-year-old Ethan for the youth side, 15-year-old Cregan for the juniors. Our grandfather used to play rugby, our uncle used to play rugby, and so did our, uh, so did our father. So it's, uh, you, should see, yeah, you should see our father doing one of the Wales games and a ref makes a bad decision. When you're playing in the game, it's like because your adrenaline's going and that's one of the main things, because your adrenaline's just pumping, you get hit and you don't feel it. And that's not me trying to sound hard or nothing like that. It's just you don't, you don't. You can ask anybody when they play. A lot of the time you think, I haven't played well unless I've got some sort of, some sort of not a bruise, but if you're aching in the morning, you, you know you've given 110%. We wanted to find out just how many knocks to the head Ethan and Cregan get during their games. Over the next few matches, they'll be wearing special headbands with sensors monitoring impact. The results won't be scientific, but they will give an indication. The boys told us they do get symptoms of concussion, but they don't give it much thought. Sometimes you feel a bit of a pressure on your skull. Like you don't know what, that's what I found as a hooker. You don't know what the props are going through but you tend to get up off the scrum and you can sometimes see, you see them a bit dazed and you can see stars sometimes. And that, that tends to happen a couple of, well, about two or three times it might have happened last season, but it's not really, a, it's not a thing you bring up. It's, you just, it's, it happens, you carry on going sort of thing. Every weekend, many young players like Ethan and Cregan take to their local rugby pitch without injury. So what exactly is a concussion? Dr. Willie Stewart is a neuropathologist at Glasgow Southern General Hospital. That injury is a result of the brain, which is like a soft jelly consistency in the, the head, uh, rotating, spinning at uh, the point of impact. So as you, you collide with your opponent, uh, your skull stops, but your brain continues to move and rotate. Dr Stewart says you don't need an actual blow to the head to suffer a concussion. It can be caused by the whiplash effect of a big hit, causing the brain to move inside the skull. And you don't need to be knocked unconscious to be concussed. 10%, 15% at most of concussions involve loss of consciousness. Uh, the rest of them involve just dysfunction, uh, the, the brain misfiring in some way. So think of everything your brain does absolutely everything your brain does, anything that can go wrong with that is a concussion. So commonest symptoms, headache, but it can be visual disturbance, balance disturbance, uh, it can be memory impairment there and then, it can be uh, loss of awareness of surroundings. So there's a whole list of, of, of symptoms. The WRU doesn't have figures available on concussion in rugby. So we decided to carry out our own questionnaire at grassroots level. We gave it to a hundred players at seven different clubs and compared the results to a similar questionnaire we did in 2010. We found that on average there was a 50% increase of blows to the head which caused symptoms of concussion. And our results are similar to those found in the professional game in England which has reported a 70% increase in concussions over four years. This is worked out per 1,000 hours of rugby. And the RFU's explanation for that is increased awareness. The WRU say the same about our questionnaire, but why don't they have figures of their own? The WRU's medical manager is physiotherapist Prav Mathima. At the moment, we've uh, done a, a study with regards to the top two tiers of the game, so the professional and the semi-professional side of the game. That's been sent for uh, uh, publication that's being reviewed right now um, and we are going to look at that for the community game as well and that research is underway right now so within the community game we're, we're, we're not sure but that, that, that research is certainly underway uh, to be able to give a robust figure of, uh, of what the numbers actually are. Rugby has always been a tough game but despite the bigger players and harder knocks 
The IRB says there's no evidence general injuries at the elite level have gone up for 12 years. In that time, concern about the effects of concussion have increased. Cardiff Blues are taking on the Scarlets. Professor Damien Bailey is here to cheer on his side. He used to play scrum half at school, but now he's a professor at the University of South Wales. He's carried out a study of 280 players, mostly Welsh, both active and retired, to better understand the long-term effects. One hand slightly forward. Nice and relaxed. The results of his study haven't been published yet, but Professor Bailey says he's made two key findings. The first is that in young players, repetitive concussions can have a negative impact on the way the brain functions, certainly in terms of the way it regulates blood flow to itself, which we think is uh, an important part of brain health. Secondly, um, when you then translate this to the retired player who's retired from the international game, it accelerates brain aging uh, and increases susceptibility potentially to early onset dementia. Um, and we've got evidence to suggest that that's the case as well. Professor Bailey admits that more research needs to be done. Other techniques like MRI imaging may be able to provide more information. The IRB has already accepted a potential link between repetitive head injuries and long-term problems like dementia. So what does the WRU think of Professor Bailey's research? The information that Prof Bailey has gathered um, unfortunately hasn't been published yet. Um, so I haven't been able to look at the data uh, that he's actually uh, produced. Um, so it's very difficult, in fact impossible, for me to answer that question. Um, but what we have done is we've um, set up um, uh, a process where we're going to be engaging with Prof Bailey uh, in the forthcoming weeks to discuss his work and also to see how we can practically utilise that uh, within the game and then, if possible, you know, make our game uh, even safer. The research was sponsored by Wales legend and retired surgeon JPR Williams. JJ finds JPR inside him. Back in the 70s, JPR was never one to shy away from the physical side of the game. John Williams over halfway off. Williams very angry indeed there. John Williams puts him in contact. But now he thinks attitudes towards concussion have to change. I played in second test for the Lions in New Zealand in 71, and I can't remember anything about the game at all. I did create the great try, but I can't remember anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that worry you? You reflect on that now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, uh, it actually worried me at the time, but you know, we've, we've got to get rid of this, uh, this macho image of, uh, of not going off the field. I am a prime candidate for, you know, suffering problems in the future. This is Scotland against England in 2008. That's a very good kick. Bolsa, I think, if you'd really gone for it. Oh, Bolsa, feet first. Oh, that hurts. The player down is Rory Lamont. After the impact, I was knocked straight into a seizure. Um, and I was unconscious for a, a few minutes. Over his career, he says he was concussed in most games, but he didn't always report it. It might have been the odd game where I didn't get it, but most of the time, that would be a regular occurrence. There's certainly moments where I really question, you know, is this because of the, the, the number of, well, the amount of brain trauma I've had? The, you know, there's times where I've been sat with very like, really close mates who I've known for years and it's taken me a few seconds to think of their name and uh, you know I've, I've heard other people mention that happens to them as well but I don't know so when that happens I, I don't think that's you know normal. Okay. Professor Bailey says more research needs to be done to fully understand the effects of concussion. He also says the health benefits of rugby shouldn't be overlooked either. We've shown that if you engage in physical activity three times a week across the adult lifespan, by the time you get to 60 years of age, the brain is functioning as if it were 10 or 15 years younger. The point that we're making really is that there are risks associated with this game and we're slowly starting to understand the longer term risks. Coach.
Back at Llantrisant Rugby Club, 15-year-old Cregan is playing against Llantwit Major. And it's not going very well. The team's behind, and Andrew says his side isn't playing up to its usual standards. You know, as they wake up in the morning, sometimes, it, uh, sometimes they're up for a game, sometimes they, uh, they not. While Dad's worrying about the game, Mum Tracy says her mind is on the boys. It's worrying, but when you're watching, your adrenaline kicks in and you're actually there with them on the, on the game um, whilst they're playing. So you, you kind of take a back seat and you don't actually look at them as you ascend on the pitch. You just want them to do the best that they can at the time. Cregan, along with his brother Ethan, has been wearing a headband inside his scrum cap, which records knocks to the head. I'd be surprised if uh, the data sh would show heavy collisions because uh, like some games have been quite open games, not so many collisions with the forwards. A consolation try isn't enough for Tantrissant. The game ends in defeat. So a disappointing afternoon for Cregan. As for the information from the headband, you'll soon find out how many knocks he's had to his head. Three, two, one, squat. While Professor Bailey's work has focused on adults, he wants more research into the effects on children. In the meantime, he thinks we need to be cautious. What we do know is that in adults, um, and certainly in players that have retired uh, from the international game, um, that the way the brain functions and the way blood flow is regulated to the brain is markedly impaired uh, and the brain ages at a much faster rate. So the concern with the children could be that um, when they are um, engaging uh, in a contact sport like rugby and if they are taking hits to the head, um, they may well be setting themselves up for a lifelong brain injury uh, and we're particularly concerned about that. We spoke to the International Rugby Board about the risks of concussion in children's rugby. Chief Medical Officer Dr Martin Raftery was in Australia when I spoke to him through a video call. Are young players more at risk from concussion? Yes, young players are more susceptible to a concussion. They take longer to recover from a concussion. They have more significant memory and also a mental processing problem. And they're also more susceptible to a rare and dangerous uh, sudden death from, from a head injury. So that's why we recommend strongly that you know, if they have any doubt at all, recognise and remove and sit them out if you've got any doubt at all. Use your head and get off the field. Protect yourself and protect your teammates. The IRB says its message of recognise and remove applies to all players. We can all help protect rugby players at every level of the game. And while rugby has brought out guidelines on concussion, not all sports have gone that far. Use your head. Recognise and remove. The WRU launched its guidelines two months ago, emphasising the need for players, young or old, to be taken off the pitch and referred to a medical practitioner whenever there's any suspicion of concussion. Dr Willie Stewart knows all about concussion protocols. He helped the IRB write theirs. He says the Welsh Rugby Union needs to do more. There's a document there for management concussion at youth level. Where's the education programme to back that up? Where's the online resource to back that up? Where's the re repeated you know, insults on uh, the, the people playing the game, people watching the game, to keep reinforcing the message of the importance of this brain injury? With regards to sending the information out, we're actually engaging with Welsh Government with regards to ensuring that schools and uh, public health practitioners uh, can use the material properly and can implement it properly. And, th and that process is, is, is ongoing right now. Concussion is not exclusive. Uh, just the rugby. It actually happens in uh, all sports where, where there, are, there are contact events. It also happens in everyday life. So this is something that we need to be aware of. We asked players how many times they'd reported having symptoms of concussion. The answer was only one in nine cases. When we carried out this questionnaire four years ago, it was one in five. I mean, that, that's startling figures, but it doesn't surprise me. We know that for every concussion which is uh, recognised during the free flow of the game, there's another four or five that you can detect after the game. You know, the best 
way to identify a concussion is for the person who's symptomatic, um, who's aware that they may have a problem, to say, I think I may have a concussion. Keeping quiet about concussion might just be part of the wider culture in the game. Martin Williams had more than his fair share of bumps and scrapes during his career. He says you need a certain mentality to be a rugby player. The minute you start thinking about how dangerous the sport is and how physical it is, I, th I think that's the time to stop because, you know, I only, only now I've retired, I look back and I think to myself, you know, what were you we doing for 15, 16 years? It was far more easier ways to make a living, but you've got to be of a certain mindset to do it and, and especially to reach the very top. This mindset might explain why our questionnaire suggests that symptoms of concussion were only reported one in nine times. The WIU says everyone needs to help spot the signs. We need to take the responsibility out of players' hands as well, uh, because on numerous occasions they won't report concussion. Um, so stakeholders such as referees, as I mentioned before, coaches, pitch side practitioners, first aiders, etc., uh, need to be given that responsibility as well to be able to notice players that have concussion and actually to remove them. Earlier this year, the IRB strengthened its protocol for pitch side testing in the professional game. So if identifying signs of concussion is so important, some feel there should be independent medics at every game. I think that would be wonderful, but not terribly practical. You think you're, you're talking about it every sport, every game of rugby around the world, at every level of the game, you're suggesting we have a, med, a, a doctor available. So you acknowledge then that there are players who are likely to be playing who are concussed who shouldn't be on the field? No, I didn't, I didn't say that. Shouldn't that be the requirement? The, the goal of having a doctor at every match from under sixes all the way through to international level is, is just not going to happen. Andrew and Cregan are looking back over the data from Cregan's headband. Though not entirely scientific, it shows he had 10 blows to the head over four matches, one of them measuring 69G. That's similar to what you might expect in a car crash. You look at it and think it's a bit of a worry, you know, considering you wouldn't notice it in a game. I wouldn't see any difference in the last few weeks in how I've played, like, that I've played before, so it's surprising how just in normal games you get, like, such big hits. Ethan's data told a similar story. In three matches, the headbands recorded seven blows to the head, the biggest at 83G. It's definitely more a, a physical game and, and hard-hitting than I ever thought it was. So when you're watching from the touchline, it's, it's slightly different than actually seeing these hard knocks and your child getting battered, really, because that's what it is. I never think there'd be so many high hits and, like, the, the big hits, you wouldn't even be able to pick them out, sort of thing. You can, like, that 83 one, you could ask me and I wouldn't be able to tell you what, what it was. We showed the information to Dr Willie Stewart. He said it wasn't totally surprising. There's some work done in, in New Zealand where they've, they've looked at similar kind of inquiry and uh, I was startled when I saw the numbers that we're talking uh, players with 50, 100 head impacts per game uh, with forces uh, which were, were way above what I would expect, were car crash levels of forces um, regularly. With so many blows, one way to make the sport safer for children could be for them to be grouped by their weight rather than their age, according to JPR Williams. That has always been the case in New Zealand. And of course, this does have a fair bit of common sense, really, because you have it early maturers and late maturers. And the early maturers get, get away with murder because they're bigger. Um, and, uh, and of course, often they get away with, with things which they wouldn't get away with if they were smaller, from the skill point of view. With the Autumn Internationals, the Six Nations and a World Cup ahead, there's a lot of rugby to come. Rory Lamont's message to players is to take concussion seriously. I would urge them to uh, educate themselves about concussion, about the short-term and long-term effects, um, and learn how to, to manage it. 
for us, the four key things are to prevent injuries happening in the first case, uh, to educate, uh, to make sure that we manage concussion properly and also that we continue with our research. While more research needs to be done on rugby's hidden headache, Dr Willie Stewart says nobody should take any chances. Knees we can replace, hips we can replace. If you damage your brain, you can't replace that. It's you, it's your personality, your sense of humour, your intellect. Damage that, it's gone, it's gone. You don't get it back. With Saturdays free, Bedwyr will be spending more time with his son. But he hasn't forgotten about the knocks to the head. Part of me is a little bit worried that there might be some damage there, but I don't know, I think... Because I, I have stopped playing now, I'm not that worried about it. As for Ethan and Cregan, they're determined to play on. I play rugby as I've always played, sort of thing. It's, uh, but then you do think, hopefully, <laughs> um, considering I want to become a primary school teacher, it won't have much effect in the future. Just fingers crossed, and uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. 